Earlier this week, I showed you guys my preferred DSLR workflow for the Triangulum Galaxy. And that workflow is great for me because I never take any calibration frames and I still get great results. However, I know a lot of you guys are taking calibration frames and I wanted to show you a slightly different workflow today that might be a bit better. I'm also going to finally incorporate PixInsight at a very simplistic level and show you just how easy some of these steps can be inside of there. My main goal today is just to simplify this workflow as much as possible and make your life easier. To start off with, you can either use PixInsight, Deep Sky Stacker, Starry Sky Stacker, whatever you're comfortable with. Then what we're going to do is open up our light frames, grab the raw data. When you've grabbed all of your raw data, then you want to go through and grab your dark frames, your flat frames, your bias, and whatever else you might need. Once you've added in all of your lights, darks, flats, etc., then you can go through, you can register the pictures to find which photos might be blurry. And in this case, I have one right here that's not very sharp. Once I've identified that, and you can see that star there in the upper left, I can always right click and then just remove it completely and then go through and stack my data. After you stacked your data, you wanna make sure you save this as maybe a 16-bit TIFF or even a 32-bit TIFF if the file is really underexposed. Then once you've got your saved stack TIFF file, hopefully incorporating all your calibration frames, that's where we're gonna head over to PixInsight and I'll show you what I've learned so far. Again, I have to stress that I am very new to PixInsight, so there's much more talented users here on YouTube that'll teach you how to use the software better than me. My goal today is just to show you some easy things I've picked up so far. And with that in mind, we'll go up to File, Open. We'll grab our stacked TIFF file from Deep Sky Stacker, which I've got right here. And then I'll hit Control or Command A. And look at that. With one button click, I've automatically fixed the exposure in the image. That's pretty impressive. If I had been using Photoshop, I probably would have taken about two or three minutes creating a series of levels adjustments to stretch the data. But here in PixInsight, I just hit Control or Command A, and the problem is solved. The next part of our workflow in Photoshop would have been to fix the color cast, which has this nasty brown color. Again, I can do that very easily here in PixInsight by going up to Process, All Processes, and then we're going to look for Screen Transfer Function. When we click on Screen Transfer Function, you should see this little red, green, and blue window here. And to fix the color cast, it's actually remarkably simple. We're going to click on the box that has a little chain to uncheck it. Then we'll click on the little nuclear button right here, and the problem is solved. And the best part is that was very easy to do. It only took us about a minute. From here, the next problem I have is that the vignette is still baked into the photo because I didn't take any flats and I did not use my normal workflow, which would account for that problem. So we have a dilemma. And again, this is where I'd point you to some of the other YouTubers that have ways of removing this problem here in PixInsight. I personally think that's way too time consuming and complicated though, especially if you're a beginner like me. So let me show you a much faster, easier way to do it. I gotta make sure I don't get ahead of myself though. So before we move on, we'll go up to process, all processes, and now we're looking for histogram transformation kind of here in the middle. With our histogram transformation window, it's kind of weird, but we need to go down where it says no view selected and choose our current image. In this case, the image at a deep sky stacker. And when I do that, we see a little curve window here and it's very underexposed. All my data is on the left side, which means technically this image we're looking at has not been officially stretched yet in terms of the raw data. To make this as simple as possible, just go up to your screen transfer function window, look for the little triangle, click on the triangle and drag it down to the very bottom of the histogram window. And if it's in the right location, you'll see the little hourglass next to your mouse. It has to have the hourglass though. When you've got the hourglass icon, you can let go of the mouse and that will apply this to the photo. Then we'll click on the square button right here. Now we see that the data has actually been stretched here on our curve. The only problem is that the image itself is pure white. So what we need to do to fix that is go back to the screen transfer function and then click on the nuclear button again. At least that's the way I do it. And there we go. I don't know why that has to be so convoluted, but basically now we've actually stretched the data, which we see here in the histogram transformation window. So we're ready to move on with the workflow. And for that, I'll go up to file save as, 
and I'll call this stretched and fixed or something like that. Whatever makes sense to you. And then we'll click on save. For the sample format, I recommend 16 bits because we've stretched the data. We don't really have to worry about the 32 bits anymore. Everything else looks good. I'll hit okay. And we now have a new TIFF file to work with. Let's head over to Photoshop next and we'll go up to file, open. We'll grab our new data here. And now we can see our image loaded up in Photoshop. The first thing we'll do is right click on our background layer and duplicate it. I want you to name this Gradient Exterminator, which some of you might already be familiar with. Then we'll go up to Filter, RC Astro, Gradient Exterminator. This is assuming that you've already installed the software. If not, you can find this over on Russell Croman's website, and he does have a free trial, which I'd recommend. And then if you like the program, you can always purchase it. Anyway, with RC Astro Gradient Exterminator, you've got a few different settings. I'd recommend doing fine for the detail, high for the aggressiveness, and then turning on the checkbox for balanced background color, just like you see here. Then if you're ready, we'll click OK. And in just about five seconds, we're gonna fix the vignette. It's really powerful just how well the software works. But we have a problem. The galaxy has become very dark. Thankfully, there's a very simple solution for this. What I'm gonna do is undo the filter, and basically, we need to tell Grain Exterminator not to target this area. Just look at the background. What you want to do is go to the left-hand toolbar, click on the Lasso tool, and with the Lasso tool selected, just click and drag a circle around the galaxy itself, or maybe of a nebula, whatever it might be. With your selection here, you can always move it around if you need to. Then we'll go up to Select Inverse, because we don't actually want to target the galaxy, but everything around the galaxy. That's what you want to see. With our galaxy removed from the selection, we'll go back up to Filter, RC Astro, Gradient Exterminator, and then we'll hit OK. And there we go. That really is amazing just how well that worked. Don't forget to hit Ctrl or Command D to get rid of the marching ants. That looks so much better than it did before. At this point in the workflow, I would normally recommend that we run the image through Starnet. And I've shown you how to do that using the standalone version, but to make things faster and easier, we're actually gonna do it inside of PixInsight. And before I do that, I should also make sure that the image has been flattened, which you can always do by right-clicking and choosing Flatten Image. And that just prevents any potential problems inside of PixInsight. With your flattened image though, we'll go back up to File, Save As, and now that we've done Gradient Exterminator, we should add that to the file name. There we go. Then we'll bring this image back into PixInsight. And this is where you might be thinking, well, why don't you just stay in PixInsight the whole time? And again, I would just say that I'm still new to PixInsight. I don't know a very fast, easy way to remove the gradient. And that's why I prefer using Gradient Exterminator inside of Photoshop, because that literally took five seconds and the problem is fixed. When you're ready to go, we'll go up to Process, All Processes, and then we're going to use StarNet 2. If you don't have StarNet 2 yet, you'll want to grab that and get it installed inside of PixInsight, and then you can follow along with us today. And really all you have to do is just click on this little triangle here and drag it over to the image, and that will begin the process. You might also want to create a star mask just for the heck of it, so you have it if you need it. That might actually help with our star reduction later on. Let's give it a try. So I'm going to choose the Create Star Mask, and then I'll drag this over to my image, the little triangle. And that will begin the process, and then we'll meet back again when that's done. All right, there we go. We've got our star mask here and then our image here with no stars whatsoever. That's exactly what we want. And I've got an idea for this star mask that I've never tried before, but we'll see how it works. Basically, we'll go up to File, Save As, and we'll call this star mask. We'll save it as a 16-bit TIFF. There we go. I'm going to close out of that. And then we have our starless photo. I'll go up to File, Save as, because we want to save this as a new version, and I'll just add StarNet to the end of this file name. All right, we're going to hop out of Pigs Insight again, go back to Photoshop, and continue on with the workflow. What you want to do is grab your star mask and then your StarNet photo. So we've got three images open at this point the original, the star mask, and then the starless. What I'm thinking is that we can take this mask and use it to reduce the stars in this photo. 
without having to do the select, color range, all that crap, this might be a lot faster. Let's see. What I'm going to do is hit Controller Command A, Controller Command C to copy the image. Then I'll paste it as a new layer right here. Next, I'll go to my adjustments window. And this is just kind of a temporary thing. So let's just add a levels. It really doesn't matter. When we add our levels, we have a layer mask here that's pure white. But I want to make it into this layer mask that we see here. So I'll go up to Image, Apply, Image, and then just hit OK. Next, I'll turn off the eyeball for layer one. Then, if you hold down the Alt or Option key, you can click on the layer mask. And what we see is that the stars aren't exactly pure white, they're kind of grayish. So let's add some contrast. For that, I'll hit Control or Command L to bring up a levels adjustment layer. And then we have these sliders here. I want to move the white point slider to the left to make those stars brighter. That way they're selected better than they were before. Something like that looks good. Then I'll hit OK. Finally, for this trick, we're going to hold down the Control or Command key and then click on our layer mask. And if we did that correctly, all the stars are now selected. Well, most of them anyway. Next, I'm going to turn off the eyeball for the levels adjustment layer, but everything is still selected. Finally, we'll click on our background layer, right click, and duplicate it, which we'll call star reduction. Again, this is all just something I'm trying right here real live. I don't even know how this is going to work, but we'll find out together. With everything selected, mainly the stars anyway, let's make our selection a bit bigger with select, modify, expand. Two pixels seems reasonable. And then we'll feather that selection with select, modify, feather. And for the feathering amount, we'll just do a value of one. Lastly, we'll go up to filter, other, minimum. We're going to minimize the brightness and the size of the stars. For the radius, that really just depends on your lens, honestly, how good it is. If it's not the best lens, you might want to use a lower value here. I'll go with a value of around 1.5, though. With the understanding that the higher the radius, the more the stars will disappear. But you might also bring back more artifacts if you're not careful. So this is up to you to find a sweet spot for your own camera and lens. I'd say just start off at 1.5, just to see, hit OK, and then finally hit Control or Command D to deselect. Let's take a look. Here's our new before and after. We've made the stars much less noticeable. And I'm pretty happy to say that my little idea actually worked. Some of you might still prefer doing that technique the old-fashioned way with select, color range, and then choosing highlights, but I figured we'd give that a try, and I'll probably start using that from now on, honestly. I realize that some of you might have gotten lost during that workflow, but I went through it clearly enough that you might want to just go back and rewatch it until you understand what we're doing. Anyway, now that we've reduced the stars in the photo, the galaxy comes through a bit better. And this is where we'd probably go to our starless photo and really stretch the galaxy to make it more visible. There's a lot of ways to do that, which I showed you in my earlier workflow, which I released earlier this week. And basically what you can do is a high pass filter, or even come in here into camera raw, zoom into the image, and then increase the texture, as well as the clarity sliders as much as you need to. Once you've done those sliders there, you can hit OK. And you don't necessarily want this to apply to the entire image. So I'd recommend you add a layer mask to this new layer. Hit Control or Command I to invert it or turn it completely black. Then grab a white paintbrush and just paint in the galaxy. That way that's the only thing being targeted. Last but not least, go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And the idea here is that we're going to blur out the edge so it's not obvious that just this area has been affected maybe a value of a couple hundred pixels. Now we need to incorporate this data with our star reduction data. And there's a lot of different ways you can do this, so I'm just going to show you one. I'm going to grab my star reduction image with Controller Command A, Controller Command C, and then paste it in as a new layer on top of my starless photo. Then I'll change the blending mode of this to probably lighten, although you can try some of the other options out there. In fact, I kind of like overlay today because it makes the image darker. 
And the main goal of this blending change is that you make the galaxy more defined by changing the blending mode of your top layer. Again, normally you'd probably do something like lighten, that way those effects can come through, but I'm actually enjoying overlay today. I realized I went through that kind of quickly, but that's because I've already shown you this in my previous workflow video, which I recommend you go watch if you still have some questions. And that image already looks a lot better than what I would have thought. From here, we can just do some pretty quick adjustments and call it a day. But I do have one serious problem that we have not addressed yet. And that is the fact that this image has a ton of color noise baked into the photo because I never fixed it in camera raw like I would in my normal routine. And what I've found is that no matter what I do here in Photoshop, I cannot get rid of this color noise. It's just thoroughly embedded in the data. For example, if I go to camera raw filter, which is what I normally do, and then I go to my detail tab, no matter how high I increase the color noise reduction, it's still there. It's definitely improved, but it's still visible. This would not be the case if I used my traditional workflow that I had in the previous video. And at this point, I would say you might want to check out some other YouTubers here for more information. And the reason I say that is because there's definitely a solution here in PixInsight with all these different processes. And there's some really talented editors out there that will show you how to remove that color noise from your photos. I just do not have the skill set yet in PixInsight to demo that for you today. For those of you that do know what to do here in PixInsight to fix this problem, you can always leave a comment down below. That way, if somebody's watching this, they'll have a better idea of what to do. But I think we're going to leave it right there for today because I've already shown you pretty much everything I wanted. The main difference between this workflow and my previous workflow is that today you had the ability to take your raw light frames, your raw dark frames, etc., stack them all together. That way you can do the calibration stuff properly. However, your image is most likely dark, underexposed, and had a weird color cast. And rather than having to fix that inside of Photoshop, which is the way I would normally do it, I showed you how to fix it very easily in about two seconds here in PixInsight using the screen transfer function. And really you just hit Control or Command A and the problem is solved. We also used PixInsight to do our star reduction very easily and even create a star mask for later processing inside of Photoshop. And those were the main differences today. So I hope you enjoyed the video. As I get more comfortable using PixInsight, I'm sure I'll have more videos to come, but I think we'll call it right there. So thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to check out some of my other tutorials here on YouTube, as well as my deep space course over on HowTube.